All right, today I'm going to review the Helix 5 fish finder. Uh, there's a lot of questions when I was first looking for fish finders, and once I bought this, the questions that I had, uh, some of them pretty simple questions, some of them a little bit more difficult uh, to figure out. But there's not a lot of YouTube videos, so I'm going to make one and hope it helps out with all the basic stuff. Some videos, you know, will go into one basic thing, but they don't cover all the base, basics of using the fish finder. So that's what I'm going to do. There'll be more advanced stuff that I won't cover that you may have to wait for another video to be made by me uh, to cover the more advanced stuff. All right, this is the Hummingbird Helix 5. It can be used for open water or ice fishing. Uh, I'm gonna go through kind of the basic setups just to get you started. Uh, that way you can mess around with it at home before you even get on, uh, get on the lake. First, kind of hold this uh, power button in. It'll come up, you gotta wait a little bit until it actually turns on. One eternity later. Okay, so once it turns on, what you can do to turn it on open water mode or ice mode, you press the menu button twice, you go over to sonar, and you'll move it over to whatever one you want. It'll ask to confirm if you want to restart. Mine's already in ice mode, which is what I want, but if you want it in open water, you just use the the button, the right arrow button here. It'll restart and get you where you, where you want. Um, so when you're messing around with it, just at home, the sonar is usually clicking and it's kind of annoying. So if, you, if you're looking at charts or maps or anything, or you just want to mess with the settings, you can press power mode and up here is sonar. We'll turn it on and off. You can see it kind of starting to show here. It's kind of confused because it's not in water, but I'm going to keep mine turned off for now. If you want to dim or brighten the screen, you, it's also with the power button, night mode, day mode, and standby so let's say you are checking some tip ups or drilling some holes and you don't want to drain the battery you put it on standby it'll turn off you just press the power button and it comes right back up without an issue now in order to see a lot of the sonar views you will have to have the sonar on in order to see the views that you want and it'll also give you the sonar over here but once the sonar is on it gives you a lot of different views there's probably a few too many views on here but you can also in order to get rid of the views press the menu button twice and go to this little eyeball it says views and you can figure out which ones you like and don't like turn them on and off um, You got the setup, you got the depth, units, uh, units for uh, distance traveled, speed, user mode, angler, or custom. I haven't done too much with that yet. Language, time zone, a lot of just kind of basic stuff. Um, if you have an SD card like Lake Masters or Navionics that has um, good contours, it'll highlight shallow water and deep water depending on what you, what you want um, you can set a bunch of waypoints and everything and then sonar here and then yeah that's pretty much it for uh, settings that you can mess with at home and then you can if you go to one of the 
chart views where it shows the maps. You can use plus and minus to zoom in and out. It comes with a decent amount of lakes to start with. I mean, you can just go anywhere, zoom out, and then zoom in. Most big lakes in the uh, in the United States have a decent chart, except for Great Salt Lake, I guess. It doesn't have depths, but most lakes, um, if they're fairly popular with a lot of people on them, it'll show depths. And yeah, that's it. I'm just messing around. All right, so first off, when you're fishing with the Helix 5 Fish Finder, views change, or view and exit change what view you're in. My favorite view is either this or this. If you do plus, it'll put the gain up. And your gain kind of is how sensitive the fish finder is. If it's uh, higher gain, you kind of get more clutter. Uh, and this is the gain. You can also press menu to get the gain up. Or just press the plus and minus. You want to be able to see your lure but you know have as least amount of clutter as possible um, declutter so that gives your feet and everything some percentages if you want to see that stuff it's nice having it off because it's just a clean view um, you got your cone angle that doesn't really need to be changed uh, lower range that's how deep it is so if you go too deep you'll get a lot of extra stuff you want it to show just barely the bottom um, surface clutter that kind of shows the stuff at the top so you put that down that'll also help with uh, kind of similar to gain you can have that pretty low and it'll help you can turn the clutter down um, oh I'm working a fish see the fish coming up it's coming just looking at it I'm gonna drop it below see if it follows Got a little bass while fish or while explaining. I'm gonna go ahead and let him down. Alright. So uh, back to showing you different settings. Chart speed, you, it'll make this go by faster or slower. I like mine on eight. Eight seems to be a decent speed without being too uh, too fast. Um, we got RTS window. So this little window here is the RTS window. If you change it to A scope, it gives it kind of like a rounded. It shows you how big the, it actually is. So now it's really big. You can tell there's a big fish because it kind of fills the whole screen. Whereas my lure just fills a small part of it. Or you can do full. Oh, another fish.
All right, so back to RTS window. Full shows it all the way across instead of having kind of a, how big it actually is. Now you can barely see it. Um, but if we turn the gain up, you can see it better. And then narrow, it shows, it's how big the RTS window is. Narrow is good enough for me. Um, sonar colors, yeah, that's pretty self explanatory. Find one that you like. And that's that for that. Now, different views. So, the chart one, for example, once you go on chart and press menu, it shows chart uh, things. Now, if you go to um, where you have that, it'll still, it shows the main window here, I believe. Uh, so each thing, depending on where you're at, so if you're like, oh, I can't find lower range, I've had an issue where you have to make sure you're in one of these views in order to get the lower range to work. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so Hummingbird Helix 5 comes with a power cable, transducer, depending on which one you get, you can get the, some of them come with the ice transducer, which is the, it hangs straight down, no matter how you hold the wire, the wire is really flimsy, so it sits good, uh, open water transducer, the cable's very stiff, so it'll kind of like twist on you, and it's a different shape too, not as heavy. So I wrapped the power cable down around the bottom. It comes with a mount that you can mount to a piece of wood, pretty easy. Um, just wrap everything around it. Created a little box for it to set up on. And battery sits behind it. Now for the connections, you can connect the power cable in a lot of different ways. You just gotta find a connection type that you like. There's a real common one where it's a male part and a female part. Not quite like this, um, but there's two of them side by side. And that's probably the best one that you can get because you would then be able to use uh, co pretty common chargers uh, come with that uh, connection type. So if you have a charger, kind of see what connection type it has and then if you can match it, try and do that. If not, you can just get any type of male, female connection to connect a battery to the unit. If you can, definitely get the lithium batteries, especially if you're ice fishing. The lead ones will die very quick in comparison. Uh, this one's just a lead uh, acid battery. Um, but it fits in there perfectly. Fits in a five gallon bucket, which is important. Uh, Cause since I don't have a carrying case, it can kind of get jumbled around. So having it in a bucket will keep it nice and steady without it tipping over and everything. And then in the front for ice fishing, I've made uh, a closed box on three sides and it can hold four tackle boxes of this size, the 3400 there, or if you have a double one of the Plano, it's pretty much the same size but it's two on top of each other. So you can fit a total of four kind of spots in there, which is very nice because then you, it's one last thing you have to put in another bucket kind of keeps stuff more organized and when you're moving spots it's really nice because you can it, everything comes with it so you don't have to carry this and a bucket and your fishing pole and a place to sit it's all all your lures are here and you just got your place to sit and fishing pole and then there's a little Rope handle here, the K 
carry it around with. The, another thing about the batteries is lithium batteries are much lighter in comparison to lead acid batteries. So right now mine kind of tips back because there's a lot of weight in the back. But if I were to have a lithium, there would be a little bit less weight in the back and it would probably sit a little more upright. Yeah. All right, so that wraps up the video. Uh, if you have more questions about it, please leave them down in the comment section and I will try to get back with you and probably create another video. And uh, if you want to be updated when that video comes out, please subscribe and that way you can see it when it comes out.